My name is Jose Antonio Padilla. I've been working for uh, Nature Trail since 2011, leading trips in Peru and in Bolivia, obviously. And um, uh, this time, this afternoon here in Peru, I talking from Cusco. Um, I know it's night there, you know, evening. So hopefully you will be uh, interested in coming to Bolivia and joining me for one of the most amazing birding trips in your life, probably. So um, <clears throat> when I first started guiding tours in Bolivia, you know, I didn't know much about it because there were no books about Bolivian birds and there were no many information about Bolivian avi avifauna over there. But, you know, since I've been leading the tours there, I have learned more about the country and obviously, you know, the birds in it. And now I can tell you folks that, you know, Bolivia is such an amazing country for birds especially. I know probably also for mammals and other wildlife, but, you know, in this opportunity, we will talk about the main uh, birds in the area that we um, um, go to and the highlights as well, the habitats and some of the places and hotels and lodges we're visiting. So um, Bolivia, so what we do as Nature Trek, we um, offer two trips, uh, the lowlands and the highlands. Right, the Lowlands is a seven days, uh, six nights tour, uh, starting in Santa Cruz, right, which is um, the biggest eastern city in the country. And um, then we have also the Highlands tour, that is about 10 days, night days. Uh, most of the times people combine the two tours, the two trips, so they do the Lowlands and the Highlands together. I mean, coming into Bolivia um, for only one week is not always the best thing to do, but that's why most of the time, people actually do the two trips together. So if we do the two trips together, it's about, you know, in 19, 20 days, almost almost three weeks. As Bolivia, as you can see, is a landlock in the middle of the continent, you know, um, and it neighbors with Peru, um, Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, and also Brazil, right? Um, first of all, I would like to talk about some interesting facts about Bolivia that not many people know about, no? In fact, um, Bolivia being in the middle of the continent and with no access to the ocean is the richest landlocked nation in the world with bird diversity. And it has about 1,435 bird species of which 18 species are endemic. No man endemics in Bolivia, no, like Peru, maybe Colombia, or even Brazil, which are the neighboring countries. But, you know, um, we have a lot of near endemic species in Bolivia. And there is a reason why. But before talking about it, I would like to give you a little bit more facts about the country. So like Bolivia is the sixth country with the highest number of birds in the world and the first in the Americas despite its lack of marine and coastal habitats, right? So, which is very interesting. In fact, you know, people say that if Bolivia had access to the ocean, and access to the you know Pacific Ocean, it will be probably the country with the most species of birds in the world. You know, it's hard to tell at the moment, obviously, because Bolivia lost its access to the ocean more than one century ago. But maybe you know, because Bolivia has all these different habitats and all these different areas where you can go to and obviously see a bunch of um, very nice birds. So in a three weeks of birding trip in Bolivia. You know, you can kill more than 700 species of birds, which is very amazing. You know, you can only do that like in Peru or Colombia. But if you actually go to all and um, the main habitats in Bolivia, you can even get up to 700 different species of birds, you know, in the country, in a birding troop. I mean, in a birding tour like we do sometimes in the country. So unlike Suriname, for example, that my colleague George was talking about earlier, you know, Bolivia is a country that also has great wildlife, of course, but the tours we do in Bolivia is mainly for birding, you know, and for birds and birding. Although sometimes we come across a bunch of, you know, mammals and other things in Bolivia, our most important uh, thing to look at when we are coming to the country are actually birds, okay? So it's really a birding trip, you know? So Bolivia, <clears throat> It's the only country in South America that offers birding specialty of the Amazon, you know, rainforest. Although in our tours, we don't actually go to the Amazon rainforest. We actually 
bird areas nearby, and we go to other different habitats, but we don't actually go to the Amazon rainforest. Uh, we prefer going to other countries maybe Peru and other countries. So then you can also do a lot of birding in what we call in Spanish, the chungas, which is mainly the cloud forest. No, in fact, in our tours in, in, in Bolivia, we do a lot of cloud forest tours, even when we do the lowlands, right? We have one full day uh, in, San, um, in Santa Cruz, where we visit a, a very nice, a very pristine cloud forest habitat known as the Siberi in Spanish, of the Siberia in English. And the reason why they call it the Siberia is very, because it's very cold, very cloudy and overcast most of the time, all right? So then we also go to some, a uh, little bit of Chaco and Cerrado habitats, which are basically, you know, like um, savanna woodlands. Uh, we do that mainly when we do the lowlands, you know, true, and savanna biomass as well, all in a three week tour. As I said, I actually, um, uh, was talking about all the different habitats in Bolivia, although we don't actually go to all of them, but we visit most of the habitats in the country, right? Another interesting fact about Bolivia, folks, is that um, Bolivia is the only country uh, that has two endemic uh, species of macaws. Believe it or not, you know, macaws, as you probably all know, are birds no members of the parrot family, no, they are in the Cetacidae family. And Cetacidae are found all over the world. However, macaws only are found in what we call the neotropics. That means from Central America all the way down to South America. Uh, in, in, and in countries like Peru, Brazil, Bolivia, and most of the South American countries really is where we get the most species of macaws. However, it's only in Bolivia where you get two species of macaws endemics. One is the red front macaw, right? And the other one is the blue throated macaw. As you can see here in the picture is the one on the right. The blue throated, very similar to um, the blue and yellow macaw, which is a common species of, all, of South America. But um, uh, there are, in fact, as you can see, 13 species of macaws and two species of native and endemics to the country. And on our tours, especially in the lowland tours, uh, we get to see the red fronted macaws. For the blue throated macaw, uh, it is an extension that we go to uh, northeast of Bolivia to a place called Trinidad. And it will take, you know, another four or five uh, days to actually go and take uh, and see it. We don't normally offer that, but we could do it in case somebody would like to go. But we offer an as an extension, right? So with the bird, and the macaw species we always get to see on these tours are the red front and macaws. No, and this is something that I really like about Bolivia. Maybe the bird found in South and East of South America, right, as you can see here, this is the red legged seriema, which is a very uh, probably, you know, uh, easy bird to see like in Pantanal, Brazil, or in other countries found in Southern part of the continent. We don't have it, for example, in Peru. But a lot of the species found in the South and East of South America reach the limit of the range in this area of the central Eastern part of the country. So saying, having said that, you can actually see, for example, in this map, no? And, I, and I'm gonna use, uh, again, the red legged seriema as an example, you know, of what I just said. Now, the main range of the uh, red legged seriema, as you can see here in the map, you know, is mainly, no, southeastern Brazil, down to Paraguay, northeast of Argentina, a little bit of Uruguay, and also in Bolivia. And as you can see here, you know, the range of the Seriema comes all the way up to the central part of the country, in a way. So when we are doing the lowland tour, for example, we always try to get things like, you know, the Seriema or key species like uh, the ones that are found, no, and they, leave, they reach the limit in this part of the country. Another interesting example of what I just said is this, for example, the golden colored tanager, a beautiful cloud forest, a mountain tanager that lives only in Peru and Bolivia, as you can see here on the map, right? And in Peru is found from central, you know, the central Andes all the way down to southern and eastern part of the country. But in Bolivia only found from the central part of the country 
to the western no? the slopes of the mountains. So again, you know, this is another bird that reached the limit of the range in Bolivia. And that is why, you know, they are very, very nice and interesting to come to see it in, in the country, right? So you cannot go to Peru and Argentina, for example, on two different trips. You can always come to Bolivia and try to see a lot of the species found in Argentina, or at least in northwest of Argentina, and a lot of species found in southern eastern north of Peru in the country, no? which is very nice. I also, I really like that a lot uh, when I'm doing my, my tours here in Bolivia. Uh, here are some of the habitats we visit uh, when we are um, traveling to uh, the country. Bolivia, like uh, most of the countries in South America, is a country with um, several habitats, you know, several uh, different um, areas, you know, what we call Maya masses. And the area of our ex piece on these trips are basically, you know, in the lowlands, the savanna woodlands, you know, and then we go up to an uh, area like um, Cochabamba, which has a lot of dry Bolivian mountain forests. And then as we move forward west of the country, we get over some what we call Puna, no habitats, which is like um, what in northern South America they would call Paramo, but Puna is much more drier, you know, but it's in the same height. And we also get through some Bolivian cloud forests, what we call in Spanish, jungas, right? So we, this is the uh, area, as you can see here in the map, but we travel, when we travel in the country, we start in, in Santa Cruz down here, and um, which is you known on the right of this uh, area, Santa Cruz City, which is now the uh, biggest city in the country. The country only has about 10 million of inhabitants, you know, not many people, uh, in fact. And uh, Santa Cruz, we have about two and a half million of inhabitants, you know, and then La Paz and Cochabamba, are the second and the third largest cities in the country. And uh, we're going through this the cities as well, um, we actually get to spend some time in the cities, but no much, no, because we always go to the um, to the birding areas, you know, every day, uh, and we try to get as many birds as possible, no, when we are doing these trips. Most of the times, we take our picnic breakfast and picnic lunch, and we spend the whole day out in the field, no. As I said, no, this is a very typical classic birding tour, and um, in Bolivia, so. And the lowlands, as I said already, is about seven days, six nights, and we start in Santa Cruz, and we go, uh, we take what we call, or what they call in Bolivia, the old road to Cochabamba, which is a little bit southwest of the city, and we go to different areas, you know, like um, uh, there is a lodge called Refugio of Volcanes, and there's another place uh, farther called uh, the uh, Monte Blanco retreat center, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's funny though. But I don't remember have seen a lot of airports in South America where birding can be so good, you know. So as soon as the people arrive in Santa Cruz Airport, usually they get about eight o'clock in the in the morning. If they take British Airways, for example, or if they come from Spain, they will come into the country about you know four thirty or five o'clock in the morning. But as soon as we get out of the airport, we start the birding. I always say to my clients, please get your binoculars ready, you know, and keep it with you when you leave the airport, because as soon as we leave the airport and uh, we start the birding, look at the nice habitat, you know, that is found around Santa Cruz Airport, and which have been registered about 268 species of birds all over. So it just, Burning out at the airport, we can get things like great rhea, red winged cinnamu, you know, white belly notura, which is this guy down here with the with the yellow legs, you know. And these guys, although they are not the easiest to see, but they are pretty much very easy to get them out there in the around the airport. You know, another speciality is also that are quite easy to get around the airport could be guira cuckoo, which is a member of the of the cuckoo family related to you know. Some people say related to coaxins in the Amazon rainforest. Campo flicker, you know, a big woodpecker that is found also uh, around the airport. I know a couple of areas where we look for, and uh, we've actually seen it very, very easy. And white woodpecker. No white woodpecker, which is more of a Brazilian bird that can be also found just around 
uh, Santa Cruz Airport uh, in a very easy way. It can, it's, it's also very nice. No choppy blackbird, which is all over, making a lot of noise, you know, and also the grassland sparrows, you know, which is a, a bird very much um, a, a, a found just in grasslands area and savanna habitat. So is the Chotoy spine tail, which is another good example of what I told you before. You know, one of the species of birds, are very common in the southern part of Brazil, maybe Argentina, but in Bolivia, you know, they reach to the limit of the range, you know, and it's around uh, Santa Cruz Airport and also another place called uh, Lomas de Arena, the only two places where we can actually see them uh, in, our, in our lowland trips, you know. Then we've got things like Bolivian Slady Anstra, which is near endemic to Bolivia, and another lowland species like Pompress Turpen and Flavescent Wobbler as well, uh, are only found in this part of the country. You know? uh, as I said before, this is mainly a burden trip. However, sometimes we get things, uh, we got some mammals like uh, crabby fox, for example, coming in, and also a, um, this is a brown throated tree toad sloth that we can see, especially in an area known as the Botanical Gardens, which is in Santa Cruz City, which is also a, another place that we go usually early in the morning to look at birds. And sometimes we get things like this, you know, mammals, which is also very interesting to see. You know, things like um, Bolivian uh, silver ear, silver ear titi monkeys are also there. And um, the silver tailed, um, uh, little uh, marmoset monkeys can be also found in this area. Then we go to this fantastic eco lodge, which is called Refugios of Volcanes. As you can see here, I, you know, make a circle where you can see the lodge down here, and it's surrounded by these beautiful, beautiful changing mountains. And it's like a hole in the middle of the Andes, and it's found there. It's about one thousand meters in elevation, right? And we get there in about two and a half hours from the city of Santa Cruz. And uh, we get to spend a couple nights, and as you can see, it's surrounded by a fantastic forest, and it's in the farther uh, southern part of one big national park in Bolivia that is called Amboro National Park. No, it's not very far from the national park, and as you can see, here is the uh, nice view of the lodge that we can all see because the car will bring us to a lookout point where we can see this beautiful place from above. And then we go down in about 20 minutes, we get down to the lodge. And here you can see some of the um, facilities, you know, the rooms and the view from down there you know, at this fantastic lodge. The food is here very nice. You know, early in the morning, you get to spend, you know, you get to have your breakfast overlooking a very nice stream or creek that is down there with a bunch of birds coming to uh, some of the feeders they put there. And if we are lucky, sometimes the guys there they decided to make some nice local made pizza or homemade pizzas as well. And we have we can all have pizzas there for supper or dinner. No, and these are some of the nice birds we can see there, like the Jungas Manakin, no, Plash Crested Jay. None of these are endemics, but you know, are highly localized around this area, no, black cap and rain. Bolivian recurvial, almost endemic to Bolivia, found also in a tiny little bit of Peru, can be also seen around the, 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 this place, no? Refugio los Volcanes. If we're lucky in a sunny day, we get things like Andean condor. Milikari macos come to the uh, lodge at some time of the year, you know, seasonal. Um, and Toko Tucan as well can be seen flying over or sometimes perched in the trees by the lodge. Another place we stayed at, especially in the lowlands, is this uh, area known as Monte Blanco, which is a spiritual retreat center. It's um, like uh, three hours from the city of, uh, of Santa Cruz, uh, almost 300 kilometers, a, bit, a little bit more than 300 kilometers and this old road to Cochabamba, as I already said before. And um, this place is also very nice. It's not really an eco lodge, it's not really a hotel, but we get to spend the night three nights in here because it's in a very good location. We have a special deal with the owners and the management of this place that allowed us to stay there for three nights. And as you can see, it's like an old style sort of cottage, you know, English cottage. And it's very quiet, very nice sometimes though. Um, they're like a bunch of teenage, uh, teenagers or young girls coming to this place, but they stay a bit far from the cabins we use. 
So we don't actually get bothered by them at all. No, and the habitats around um, uh, uh, this restrict center I was just talking about, uh, it's very dry habitat, you know, with some dry um, mountains around. And this is the main habitat for one of the most spectacular birds in Bolivia and a bunch of endemics like red fronted macaw, you know, on the left here on the uh, screen, the newly described species of parakeet uh, called cliff parakeet, you know, which is like a split from the monk parakeet, but you can see it's completely different. Bolivia blackbird is another endemic found also around, and Bolivian earth creeper, you know, that you can see down here, is also found around this area known as Coma Rapa. All right. We also have uh, excellent, uh, very nice birds like a great walk tail tyrant here on the left, a spot bird puff bird, and the scissor tail niger that is very easy to see around this area, especially at night. No? Then we go to the highlands, which is about 10 days, night, nights. And from the highlands, we go from Cochabamba to La Paz, you know, making one night stop in Oruro. No? And here, we can get, you know, things like this fantastic, critically endangered bird called Cochabamba mountain finch. They live in a, you know, in, they live in a very little area close to what we call Quenuales or Polylepis trees, right, in Cochabamba. And um, we've been very lucky to see them almost every time. So um, it's obviously the population is decreasing because of the uh, deforestation and the cutting of the trees around, but it's uh, we also have a very good chance to get the Cochabamba mountain finch. And also in the same area, we got things like Wedgetail Hill Star, now almost endemic to uh, Bolivia. It's also found in Argentina. Macis Canastero, again near endemic, and this new uh, Rufus Valley mountain tunnel. It used to be called Rufus Valley Saltator before, but the English name has just recently changed to mountain tunnel. Yeah. All these three species were uh, quite easy to see including the Cochabamba mountain finch in this part of the country. Then we also go to some cloud forest areas, what we call jungas, and we get things like green protetana here, which is highly localized in Bolivia, and some little spots in Peru. Torrent dots as well can be, uh, can be seen quite easy, you know, especially in the rivers there. White ear solitary, only found in southern eastern Peru and also in Bolivia. No, the um, Bantel fruit eater also around the uh, near endemic hooded mountain uh, toucan, hooded mountain toucan, you know, a lot of the clients I have um, guided over these 10 years, um, this is the last toucan they need to see, and they come to, to Bolivia actually to get it, no? Versicolor barbet is another nice, uh, almost um, endemic species of bird in, in Bolivia and in Peru. Another bird, including, you know, Andean cock of the rock, plush cup, orange brown hemispingos, light crown spine tail as well are easy to see in the cloud forest of Cochabamba. One day we go, one day we go out birding in a place called, um, with a big lake just in the middle of the city of Cochabamba called Alguna Alalay. And here we get things like Angine Abocets again, not only found in southern eastern Peru and in Bolivia, no, a uh, rossi bill pochard, no, uh, can be seen in this lake, red choveler, you know, uh, I've seen sometimes there and the red fronted coot, you know, uh, can be confused sometimes with the common gallinal, no, but there are certain features and field marks you have to look at to actually ID the birds. Then we have this almost um, also very uh, endangered species called Titicaca grebes that we also, we get it in Titicaca Lake, but there are also a couple other locations that I know that we can also get it. You know, uh, only live around. Uh, there's, there's less than 1,000 individuals left in the world, unfortunately, due to the you know heavy fishing uh, activities on the Lake Titicaca. But can we also see the three species of South American um, flamingos are found in Bolivia, like Chilean flamingo, Andean flamingo, and also Jane flamingo are found around here, especially in the Highland trip. And then finally, we go to the city of La Paz. You know, La Paz uh, is a very nice city located like in a big, huge, and very deep valley, right? And uh, that you can actually see from up above in uh, some lookout points. And as you're coming in, 
So La Paz, although it's not the capital of Bolivia, the capital of Bolivia is Sucre, La Paz is um, the place where the president lives and also the um, uh, other politicians also live around. No, um, in La Paz, there's a very nice cloud forest as well that we go to, uh, including, you know, this very, uh, the, the very famous road called the Death Road, no, which is, which is now used a lot by mountain bikers, but we also uh, go there to do a lot of birding, which is here on the right of the screen. And on the way there, we get to pass some beautiful snow-capped mountains, some beautiful Andean lakes, and obviously the Jungas uh, habitat or the cloud forest are amazing, no? Um, and around La Paz, we are going to try to get things like uh, Rufus Belly Sea Snipe, Great Breasted Sea Snipe as well, that are quite easy to get. You know, Giant Coots, the um, endemic Black Hooded Sunbeam as well. And another endemic, a very rare canastero called Virtus Calastero, is also in the, uh, in the tour. No? <clears throat> Here are some endemic uh, uh, species of Bolivia that we always get on our highland tours. Then we, one day we will go to Lake Titicaca, no, and we get passed by. In fact, we're having lunch in one of the restaurants by the lake, right? And you know, Lake Titicaca is the highest navigable lake in the world. No, it's very nice, it's fantastic, and it's only uh, chaired by Peru and Bolivia. Obviously, we go to the Bolivian sites, no? And in La Paz, we stayed at this nice hotel called Rosario Hotel, which is a 3.5, no, three and a half a star hotel in a very nice neighborhood, close to a lot of handicraft markets and a lot of uh, areas where you can have also and a little bit of shopping if you want, no? And this is the, the, the place and the hotel we stayed at. Very nice, no? Especially for the end of the tour. Very nice and comfortable. And here is some of the book that I recommend for coming to Bolivia. This is just to, to finish. I know I go over the time, sorry folks. Uh, well, Birth to Bolivia, which is a, a, a new book recently released, I think a couple of years before the pandemic, right? That can be found only in Bolivia, unfortunately, at the moment. If you want to get a book, you have to contact Nature Trek, and then we, together we get the book for you and you get it when you get to the country. Then you also can get other books as well for uh, birding in Bolivia, like uh, Southern American passerine, birds of Brazil, especially the one of Pantanal and Cerrado, you know, the aves or the birds of Argentina, Uruguay, birds of Southern of South America is also very good um, <clears throat> that you can get. Birds of Peru, of course, being so close to the country, a lot of the species found in Southern Eastern Peru are also found in, in Bolivia. And this old book, but very, very good, as you can get it, also highly recommended, Birds of the High Andes, which, you know, talks a lot of the uh, high, Andean, uh, high Andean birds, including teals and, you know, um, dogs and all the stuff. Um, anyway, so thank you very much, everyone. Hope I did, uh, you didn't get too, <laughs> too bored, uh, to get bored with my lecture. And I uh, hope to see you soon in Bolivia. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it.